What if I told you that one country, quiet, snow draped, and often underestimated, is quietly building some of the most ambitious infrastructure projects on Earth? From the $28 billion Ontario line tunneling beneath Toronto, to a floating oil rig off the coast of Newfoundland that drills in water 1,200 meters deep, these are not just construction projects. So buckle up, like and subscribe, because today we're diving into the mega projects reshaping Canada from the ground up. Beneath the streets of Toronto, a 15.6 kilometer artery is taking shape. The Ontario Line. On paper, just another subway. In reality, a $28 billion gamble to untangle one of North America's most congested transit systems. This isn't just a line, it's a reset button. By 2031, the Ontario line will move 388,000 people every day, slashing a 70-minute east-west commute down to just 30. That's not just a shortcut, it's a structural shift. One that pulls 28,000 cars off the road daily, clears the air, and breathes speed into a city choking on delay. Driverless trains, automated platforms, a fusion of underground, elevated, and surface level tracks. Every station is a node in a smarter, cleaner future. Toronto didn't just need a subway, it needed a system reborn. And with the Ontario line, that rebirth has begun. On the edge of Lake Huron stands a quiet titan, Bruce Power. One of the largest nuclear facilities in the world a plant producing nearly a third of Ontario's electricity. But age is caught up. Radiation, time, where? The answer? A $13 billion refurbishment unlike anything before. Inside, crews are replacing steam generators, pressure tubes, and fuel channels, components scorched by decades of energy production. They're using robotics, artificial intelligence, precision engineering to do what once required dangerous manual labor. When it's done by 2033, Bruce Power won't just be renewed, it'll be future-proofed, delivering clean, low-emission energy for decades, cutting the carbon equivalent of 5 million cars, and giving Canada a stable backbone for its green energy ambitions. If Toronto's subways are the city's veins, then Pearson International Airport is its global gateway, a place where millions enter, exit, and connect. Yet for too long, Pearson is strained under the pressure of growth, Terminals clogged, security lines snaked endlessly, baggage systems groaned under increasing loads. But now, a new chapter is unfolding. A $4.7 billion transformation has taken flight, one that aims not only to handle more passengers, but to redefine the very essence of the airport experience. This is an expansion for expansion's sake. It's reinvention born of necessity. Pearson is preparing to serve 65 million travelers annually, a figure more than double what it saw just two decades ago. New concourses are arising. Modular gates are being installed that can flex between domestic and international needs. But the real revolution lies in intelligence. Artificial intelligence is being baked into every layer of Pearson's operations. Facial recognition at customs, predictive maintenance on infrastructure, Baggage systems that follow each bag's digital fingerprint in real time. Even HVAC systems are being equipped with sensors to optimize airflow, temperature, and energy usage dynamically because in a warming world, sustainability can't be an afterthought. On the blustery eastern tip of Canada, where Atlantic winds whip across empty coastlines and rugged highlands, a new kind of energy revolution is quietly unfolding. Newfoundland and Labrador long known for its fishing fleets and oil rigs, is now positioning itself at the forefront of a different frontier, green hydrogen. With $1 billion in investment already committed, these turbines will generate up to 4 gigawatts of clean electricity, an enormous amount, far exceeding local demand. But here's the twist. That energy won't just power homes. It'll power electrolysis, a process where electricity splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. The result? green hydrogen, a fuel with no emissions, no fossil base, and vast export potential. Germany, Japan, and South Korea are already eyeing Canada's hydrogen supply with interest. Global shipping ports are being redesigned to accommodate liquefied hydrogen exports. Pipelines and transport infrastructure are being planned with this new economy in mind. By 2025, 
Full-scale construction is expected to begin, bringing thousands of jobs and injecting fresh momentum into rural economies that have long needed diversification. It's not just a project, it's a national pivot. Just beyond the gridlocked arteries of the Greater Toronto Area, a new lifeline is emerging. One paved not with just asphalt, but with ambition. Highway 413 is Ontario's $6 billion answer to a region choking on delay. A 59-kilometer expressway stretching from Highway 400 in the west to the 407 in the east. It's more than a road, it's an economic supercharger in disguise. For years, the GTA has suffered the consequences of unchecked urban growth with insufficient infrastructure to match. Commutes ballooned, supply chains slowed, and small towns in the corridor between Brampton and Vaughan became traffic bottlenecks. Highway 413 aims to reroute that future. It's being designated not just to carry cars, but to carry the weight of a rising population, expected to top 15 million in the next 25 years. This isn't just a ribbon of concrete. It's being tailored for tomorrow. Along the route, embedded sensors will monitor traffic flow in real time. Construction is guided by drone mapping and AI-enhanced surveying. Electric vehicle charging stations are being hardwired into rest areas, transforming what once was idle downtime into recharging opportunities for both people and machines. At the core of Southern Ontario's transit transformation lies one of the most ambitious rail projects in Canadian history the $21 billion overhaul of GO Transit. The plan? Nothing short of a complete reinvention of how the region moves. For decades, GO Transit's familiar green and white trains have served commuters from places like Oshawa, Barrie, and Kitchener, shuttling them into the heart of Toronto. But those trains ran on diesel. They ran infrequently, and they belonged to an earlier, slower era. Now, GO Transit is going electric, and it's not just about speed. Electrification means more frequent trains, quieter rides, and slash carbon emissions. Now electric multiple units will replace the diesel fleet, bringing modern acceleration and braking systems that allow for tighter schedules and more responsive service. But the transformation runs deeper than the trains themselves. Over 200 kilometers of new and upgraded tracks are being laid. Signal systems are being replaced with cutting edge digital controls. Aging stations are being renovated, some torn down and rebuilt entirely with accessibility, design, and urban integration at the forefront. The result is what Metrolinx is calling a all-day, two-way service. Instead of having to time your day around the train, the train will adapt to your schedule. Every 15 minutes on the busiest lines, you'll have a train, whether it's rush hour or Sunday evening. That kind of reliability doesn't just serve commuters. It reshapes real estate, drives economic growth, and makes suburban living more viable. The environmental impact is no less transformative. With diesel engines phased out, greenhouse gas emissions from GO operations are projected to drop by over 50%. That's not just a technical win. It's a public health benefit for communities along the corridor and a bold signal of Ontario's climate commitment. High on Montreal skyline, the distinctive silhouette of the Olympic Stadium, nicknamed the Big O, has stood for nearly five decades. A marvel of design when it opened for the 1976 Summer Games, it later became infamous for its construction overruns, structural flaws, and chronic maintenance headaches. For years, it symbolized ambition gone awry. With an $870 million investment, Olympic Park is being reborn, not just patched or preserved, but repurposed for the next century. The centerpiece is the stadium's massive roof. Long plagued by safety concerns and water damage, the current roof will be replaced with a new, high-performance structure capable of hosting events year-round without risk or restriction. This isn't just a fix, it's a reboot. But the vision stretches far beyond the stadium shell. The entire Olympic Park is being reimagined as a cultural engine. Public plazas, interactive museums, green spaces, art installations, and retail corridors are being added to turn the once dormant site into a thriving civic destination. This revival has meaning. For many Quebecers, the Olympic Stadium is a cultural artifact, a reminder of Montreal's global movement and its architectural daring. But it's also been seen a financial burden and a political sore spot. The new plan seeks to heal that rift, not by erasing the past, but by unlocking its value for today's community. Beneath the cold waters of the Atlantic, more than 500 kilometers off the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador, a game-changing energy project is pushing the limits of Canadian engineering 
Bay du Nord. With an estimated $1 billion investment, this deepwater offshore oil development is Canada's first project in waters exceeding 1,200 meters deep. Spearheaded by Equinor and supported by Canadian partners, Bay du Nord represents both a frontier challenge and an economic opportunity that's impossible to ignore. The centerpiece of the project is a massive floating production, storage, and offloading vessel known as an FPSO. It will operate autonomously in the open sea, extracting crud from multiple subsea wells, storing it on board, and offloading it to tankers for global export. It's an entire oil operation, floating, mobile, and anchored in the most hostile waters Canada has ever drilled in. But what sets Bay du Nord apart is its commitment to efficiency and environmental controls. Advanced carbon capture systems are being integrated directly into the production cycle. Cutting-edge monitoring tech will track underwater seismic activity, ice flows, and marine ecosystems in real time. And compared to older offshore fields, Bay du Nord is expected to produce oil with 30% lower emissions per barrel. For Newfoundland and Labrador, a province still recovering from the decline of fisheries and fluctuations in oil demand, Bay du Nord is more than a project. It's a pillar of economic hope. Over 10,000 jobs are expected across the life cycle of development, from fabrication yards to shipping lanes to maritime logistics. Billions in revenue will flow into local communities and federal coffers. Still, environmental advocates have raised red flags. Can any oil be truly clean in an age of climate urgency? And should Canada be investing in hydrocarbons just as the global market pivots towards renewables? Saskatchewan's prairies stretch wide and quiet, but in the heart of it all lies a lifeline forged by steel, concrete, and an ambition to connect the past to the future. The Regina Bypass is the largest infrastructure project in the province's history, a 61-kilometer loop of ingenuity built to encircle Regina, the provincial capital, while rerouting commercial traffic, easing urban congestion, and saving lives. Costing $1.9 billion, this mega corridor redefined mobility in southern Saskatchewan. Before it, semi-trucks rumbled straight through city streets, snarling local traffic and endangering pedestrians. Now, commercial vehicles sweep past with minimal interruption, guided by precision design interchanges, overpasses, and service roads. Each component wasn't just engineered to move vehicles, it was engineered to protect human lives. Wide shoulders, gentle curves, advanced lighting systems, and weather responsive signage ensure year-round reliability, even in the province's brutal winters. But what makes Regina Bypass more than a ring of road is its environmental foresight. Wildlife corridors burrow beneath its lanes, designed to allow animals like deer and coyotes to pass safely without disrupting traffic or risking collisions. The entire route is flanked by erosion control systems, stormwater retention basins, and landscaping with native grasses that help maintain biodiversity and guarding against flooding. It's a marriage of human ambition and ecological humility. Rising from the waters of the St. Lawrence like a sculpture in motion, the new Samuel de Champlain Bridge in Montreal is an icon not merely of engineering, but of national resilience. The original Champlain Bridge, opened in 1962, had deteriorated into one of the most critical infrastructure liabilities in Canada. Cracks formed, steel rusted, entire sections need constant reinforcement. The need for replacement was not a matter of aesthetics, it was a matter of survival. Enter the $4.4 billion answer a next-generation cable-stayed marvel completed in 2019. Spanning 3.4 kilometers, this bridge isn't just long, it's lean, luminous, and lasting. Designed with a 125-year service life in mind, its high-performance concrete resists corrosion, while its steel structure is crafted to endure even the harshest Canadian winters. Snow, salt, and freeze-thaw cycles no longer pose a death sentence to structural integrity. With a six-lane highway, a dedicated two-lane corridor for public transit, and a fully protected multi-use path for pedestrians and cyclists, the bridge isn't just for vehicles, it's for people. Over 50 million vehicles cross annually, but it's the daily commuter, the cyclist, and the trucker hauling freight that turn this bridge from concrete to pulse. Quebec City is one of North America's oldest settlements. Its narrow streets and cobblestone corridors tell stories older than the country itself. But in the face of a growing population and mounting climate challenges, the city is now writing a new chapter on rails. For the first time in its modern history, Quebec City is building a light rail transit system. The $3.3 billion tramway project spans 16 kilometers and threads through the city like a green artery. 
It's clean, it's fast, and it's the most ambitious public transit project the capital has ever seen. Electric trams will glide across key corridors, linking densely populated neighborhoods with downtowns, universities, and commercial hubs. No longer will buses clog arterial roads or traffic jams choke the city's rhythm. The tram system will remove thousands of cars from circulation, reducing not just emissions, but stress. But the vision doesn't stop with rails. Stations are being integrated into the city's existing architectural fabric, each a blend of function and form. Public plazas, retail spaces, and bike-sharing infrastructure are woven in, making every stop a miniature hub of civic life. In the rugged expanse between Alberta's oil sands and the Pacific Ocean, a pipeline pulses with controversy, commerce, and ambition. The Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion isn't just Canada's most scrutinized energy project, it's also one of its most vital. Stretching over 1,150 kilometers, the expanded pipeline doubles capacity to transport an additional 500,000 barrels of oil per day aimed at meeting global demand and tapping new markets in Asia. At a cost of $12.6 billion, it's a national scale endeavor and a lightning rod for debate. The pipeline snakes through mountains, under rivers, and across ecologically sensitive terrain. To meet this challenge, engineers designed directional drilling paths, built wildlife crossings, and implemented automated shutdown systems capable of responding within seconds of a pressure anomaly. The entire route is monitored 24-7 via satellite, aerial patrols, and ground sensors. Is it perfect? No. Is it necessary? For many, yes. The Trans Mountain expansion is not just about energy, it's about sovereignty, strategy, and economic leverage in a changing world. In the heart of Vancouver, where land is scarce and ambition runs deep, a sleeping giant is waking. Oak Ridge Center, once a humble mid-century mall, is transforming into a $5 billion vertical neighborhood, a city within a city. The vision? A hyper-dense, hyper-modern community of 2,500 homes, office towers, shops, cultural spaces, and seamless transit access. Rising like a glass and steel forest, Oak Ridge is redefining what urban living in the 21st century can look like. Skyscrapers curve with organic grace. Rooftop parks bloom with native flora. Pedestrian pathways replace car-centric sprawl. Every building is designed with sustainability in its DNA. Green roofs absorb rain and insulate homes. Smart energy systems adjust power usage in real time. EV charging stations, geothermal heating, and solar integrated facades ensure the neighborhood isn't just carbon conscious, it's energy agile. But Oak Ridge is more than just a smart grid. It's an emotional proposition. With open-air amphitheaters, music halls, public art installations, and multicultural plazas, it's designed to spark interaction and belonging. Transit connects directly to the Canada Line, linking residents to downtown Vancouver in minutes. Walkability, density, and design converge to answer the question, what if the city didn't sprawl but spiraled upward with soul? Canada's mega projects aren't just concrete and steel. They're blueprints for resilience, symbols of belief in what the next century demands. Clean power, seamless transit, economic expansion that doesn't ignore the environment. These projects aren't reactions, they're preemptions. A country often viewed as quiet is speaking loudly, an infrastructure that dares to dream big. Because while some nations build for the moment, Canada is building for what comes next. Would you ride the Ontario line, cross the Champlain Bridge, or walk the wind farms of Newfoundland? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching this video with us and catch you in the next one.